Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first YouTube episode of In the Garden with amateur meteorologist Timothy Bro. Here in Gilbert, Arizona, in this Norn Desert, provides a long growing season for all plants and vegetables. Here in the Southwest, all you need is the time and the know how, how and when to plant, and how plants adapt to the desert climate. Today is March 20th, 2016, the first official day of spring. As you can see, the garden is already coming along. If you remember from my previous videos on the YouTube channel called Amateur Meteorologist, it is the same one. I am still here planting my garden. And as you can see, this is the corn only three and a half weeks later. After some fertilizer, a little bit of rain, and love, the garden continues to thrive. Here, I'm gonna go through my garden, explain to you diseases, pests, and other common things that go wrong in any garden, whether it be in Arizona, the Midwest, or in the Northeast United States. No matter where you are, you have questions or comments, send them my way. I can answer just about anything. I've been gardening in my little career for the last 15 years, and hence the term amateur, but I've learned a lot over the years. Here we have onions and the corn that is taking off beautifully. This corn is actually only three and a half weeks old and is already almost two and a half feet tall. Soil preparation is very important in any garden, whether it be a raised bed or in the ground itself. I do a variety of gardening, some in the ground and some in raised beds, but found that raised beds are much easier to contain and control weeds and pests. Coming to the other side of the garden, these are the seedlings that were started about three and a half weeks ago, and already they are thriving beautifully. Some common problems that you'll come is when you transplant certain plants, such as cucumbers. Cucumbers are very fragile, and you don't want to disturb the roots. I've had to thin these out and pull out some of the dead plants. I planted a lot of seeds in the containers, five to seven seeds in one little pocket, because not all the seeds are going to thrive. Here, you can see the second leaf set is beginning to emerge from the cucumber plant. <clears throat> Over here, we have Crouchon melons. These melons will continue to grow at a growth rate of nearly two inches per week. These cucumbers are already starting, um, excuse me, these melons are already starting with their second set of leaves as well. We need to watch for pests and snails and other bugs that are gonna try to eat the tender seedlings. The way to do that is simply to lay down some pellets that you can get at your local nursery called snail repellent. Over here, we have watermelon. Watermelon are doing the same exact thing. We can already see that the second leaf set is beginning to come up from the main two leaves of the shoot. After the second set of leaves first start to appear, the growth rate will be incredibly fast. Ample water and moisture is imperative for any plant. After you transplant transplants into a raised bed such as this one or the ground, make sure you water once a day for at least three weeks. Here we have spaghetti squash and you can see these are coming along beautifully. These are about two and a half weeks old and already are showing signs of second and almost third sets of leaves. Here's the first set of leaves from the initial sprout. Here's the second set of leaves. And then if you look in here closely, you can see a third set of leaves that are beginning to come up here. Now, I garden with a limited amount of space. I don't have a lot of land, so I can't plant a whole lot of stuff in a confined space. So I've learned over my 15 years how to do this. Um, these are sugar pumpkins, also known as Connecticut Field. And um, you can see we have the first set of leaves, second set of leaves, and third set of leaves. Now when the third set of leaves appear on any plant, you're going to want to start fertilizing with a heavy nitrogen fertilizer in order to continue the beautiful green growth of the plant. As you can see, there are little or no weeds in this garden bed. It is important that you pull weeds out early. You don't want the weeds pulling the nutrients out of the soil. These are green beans, also known as bush bean. These are about two and a half weeks to three weeks old, and already you can see multiple shoots of leaves that are beginning to appear from the main center stem. This is where the beans flowers will appear, self-pollinate themselves, and will continue to grow and thrive. 
two weeks from now, the first set of beans will begin to appear on these plants. I'm going to take you over to the other side of the garden. Over here we have Brussels sprouts. Now Brussels sprouts here in the desert southwest thrive between the months of January through June. It is important that you get Brussels sprouts growing quickly. You want to watch for pests. On the underside of leaves is where the most common areas for bugs to hang out, such as cutworms and aphids. This spinach is just about ready to pick, and you can see some slight bug damage, but nothing major. This is looking quite well. This is from last October. It was growing really slow over the winter season and is now quickly taken off. These are a Crouchon melon. Now I've had some problems with these over the last three weeks. They began to die on me due to the heat as we had a very early warm up in late February with temperatures reaching the low to mid 90s. And it dried out a bit. So the bed didn't do quite so well. Plants started to die off. I had to take some of the old leaves off and re-fertilize these plants. The fertilizer I used was a liquid nitrogen fertilizer called fish emulsion. I'll show you that in a moment. These are pink brandyvine tomatoes. <clears throat> and as you can see, they are beginning to take off beautifully. Remember, liquid nitrogen or nitrogen in any garden plant, vegetable or flower, is imperative in the early stages of a garden. Here we have sweet corn. This is a yellow variety. This requires ample watering and fertilizer. Corn, cucumbers, and squash are extremely heavy feeders on nitrogen. Soil content is important. Retaining nitrogen in any soil is imperative to a beautiful, good, healthy growth on a vegetable plant. We make sure, I'm not the best example of this at the moment, but there's a lot of weeds here. I've been working on the weeds endlessly, day and night, trying to pull them out and get rid of them. Here are yard-long cucumbers, and next to that I have my peas. This is a good variety of cucumber to plant. It is extremely drought tolerant and extreme heat. It can be handled on these plants. Now they didn't look too good. The nitrogen was not good in the soil, so I had to add fish emulsion. These were all yellow and wilted, but now, after just a week of fertilizing, they have blossomed with beautiful green growth. Remember, nitrogen. Feed the plant and the soil. Feed the soil first. Here we have more melons that I planted yesterday. These are all my seedlings. Here we have the butternut squash plant. These pellets on the ground are that of the snail repellent. This is simply to keep away the pests from eating my tender seedlings. Another row of sweet corn and pumpkins. More pumpkins. I love pumpkins. And here we got black beans that are planted right next to the pumpkins. The pumpkin leaves will help to make sure that they cover the beans during the extreme heat of the summer. And over here we have yellow zucchini. These are the first few blossoms that are beginning to open on my plant. At this stage, the plant is much too young to produce anything of fruit. However, flowers will begin to emerge about four weeks onto your squash plants. About one month. These were not doing very well either. The soil was just not good. I had to feed it with a liquid nitrogen fertilizer. These plants are heavy feeders, and they will continue to be heavy feeders as we head through the summer. Today, I pulled out all the weeds and made sure that the beds looked beautiful. I wanted to make a correction. Today is actually March 19th. Tomorrow is the first full day of spring, ladies and gentlemen. Either way, I'm a day ahead. But anyways, you can self-pollinate yourself as well using the method of the toothbrush, the Q-tip, or well, if you have any other methods, let me know. Um, I do mine with the toothbrush and Q-tip transferring the pollen from male to female. Right now, I only have female flowers that are open, but I'm waiting for the male flowers to start showing in the next one to two weeks. So, I have another bed that I'm cleaning out over here. This is in the ground. This is native Arizona soil, which is a clay loam or sandy loam. And 
stuff does thrive in it quite well. So we'll keep you guys posted if you have any questions or comments um, about the gardening throughout the season. Send them my way. I can answer just about any question you've got. This is the fertilizer I use. <clears throat> it's a 5-1-1 ratio. Alaskan fish fertilizer. You mix two capfuls of this in a gallon watering can and go around the base of your plants. This is an absolute must in the garden. And I found that it is cheap and everything thrives when you apply it to the plant. This is Amateur Meteorologist in the Garden signing off.